All right, chaps, welcome to another video. In this video, we're gonna be doing the wheel alignment on this DC5, something a bit different because we're gonna be doing a fast road alignment. What the heck is a fast road alignment? You've probably seen it in adverts and on forums and stuff like that. Basically, it's somewhere between the OEM configuration for the car and a track alignment. It's not gonna be a balls out track alignment, but it's gonna be a bit more spicy. Now, this is a 2003 DC5 Type R. So it's a pretty well specced car, a car that will be well at home on the test roads where we are today. We'll be well at home on these roads. So we're gonna go for a little drive now, see how it is now. It's, uh, it's not great. So this is owned by Matt, who I share the unit with, and he's done me so many favors lately. And I've promised him for a while that we'll do a wheel alignment on his car. And I thought it'd be fun to make a little video about the DC5 and about fast road alignments. I used to own one of these cars. I do like them a lot. It's a really nice blaster on the B roads. Everyone knows how good EP3s are on the road, right? Well, these are just that little bit better. You know, you've got the shorter box and the LSD. And of course, the visuals, who doesn't like the look of a DC5? We can all get behind this, I'm sure. So this video, we're gonna head back to the barn now. We're gonna get it on the ramp. We're gonna go over the coilovers, double check everything's all right there. I may add a little bit of rear ride height, if you'll let me. I know Matt's had some stancy cars in the past. We'll see how he feels about adding a little bit of rear uh, ride height, because it's, it's currently raking a little bit to the rear. But we'll not be going too in depth with the technicals. I wanna make this more about what exactly a fast road alignment is and how the car feels after that. So let's get in the car. Head back to the barn now, I'll tell you how the car drives now. Remember, it's just had some coilovers fitted and yeah, it's uh, it's all over the shop. Unfortunately, we won't be able to compare, say what an OEM alignment is versus a fast road alignment, but we will be able to say just how a fast road feels after we're done. And what a day we've got to test. Oh, it's a lovely day. So let's get back to the barn and get it on the ramp. The familiar sound for any Japanese car owners. I've not missed that. All right, so the alignment that's on this car at the minute is, let's just say, there's not an alignment on it because it's no bueno. So at the minute, I can tell you for free, even on this bumpy road, she wants to pull to the left a little bit. Oh, now she's straight. There's not a lot of feedback. It turns, it turns right a lot better than what it turns left. Oh. Yeah, it really dived when there was a bit of a dip in the road there and the car really dived into it. So he's fitted these coilovers and we've got cyclists all over the road. He's fitted these coilovers and um, yeah, it's just not been aligned basically. So yeah, we're going to see a massive improvement from doing the alignment on this. It is nice to be back in a DC5. driving very straight. <laughs> Quite a lot of wheel hop. Yeah, on this smoother road, you can't really tell, but like the centre, that's not really doing a lot to the tyres. I think we're going to find some interesting things when we do have a look at the alignment. So these are the sorts of roads where you want to be having fun in your Integra, but you're on edge with this wheel alignment, well this lack of wheel alignment on edge because the car just being dragged all over the shop. Now I think we'll see a big improvement on a road like this after we've done our fast road wheel alignment. Good. The way it is now is not good. Right, skip forward an hour or two, and um, we've actually gone a bit further than what we were going to do. We've ended up corner weight in the car. Now we ended up adjusting the rear ride height. As I said, we've, we've increased the the rake quite a bit, it's quite a significant amount. And we just wanted to double check what the corner weights were at following that. Now they're not too bad, but we are going to make some adjustments. We've currently got 48. 0.8% uh, cross weights. That's the weight of the right front and the left rear to the right rear. 
and the left front. Right, we'll not get too technical, but just letting you know what we're doing, and then we'll get on with the, the fast road alignment just after. Boom. All right, we've got the 50-50. So we're gonna move on to the wheel alignment now. Just putting the roll bars back on. Uh, the car had three quarters of a tank of fuel, by the way. How much do you think it weighed? Go on, have a guess. Have a think about it. DC5, and it weighed 1230 with three quarters of a tank. So call it 1200 dry, that's pretty good that. Right, so we'll get the wheels back on now anyway, and we'll set some camber. So it is a little bit higher on the left, but that's the way the, the scales went. Mm. So I've just sent it the steering wheel and already you can see the alignment's off like fuck. Wow. <laughs> That'll be that razor. Yeah. All right, camber first. Six. Have you changed camber? Alright, we've ended up doing quite a lot more than what we set out to do today, but the car is definitely going to feel a lot better for it. So we've corner weighted everything. So we've fully corner weighted the fully corner weighted? That makes sense. So the car's been corner weighted. We've added some caster at the front by swapping the top plates. We've just added some wobble bolts in the front, which we didn't want to do, but we've had to do to get the camber back. And we've just set the camber on the rear now. So we've got 2.2 degrees of camber at the front, 1.8 at the rear, which is fast roady, not, not too much. And it means that if he does put some track days into it, then he'll be about right, you know, it won't be too bad. It's somewhere in the middle, yeah. And we're just gonna do the toe now. We're just gonna do the simple one mil of toe in and one mil of toe out, toe out the front, toe in at the rear. But yeah, we've got some caster now. Yeah, we've got some caster. This is what a lot of the race car teams do. So we've taken the left top mount and put it on the right and we've put the right on the left kind of thing and that's allowed us to move the shock backwards a little bit to improve the caster so that'll improve the steering feel loads. Should feel really good now. But yeah we're almost done, just finishing off the toe. We've probably been on the car for about five hours in total. Yeah, it's been fun on it Matt. It's been too much fun you could say yeah but the car should feel fantastic after it. Oh no! What? Steering wheel's moved. Is it? Yeah, it's on fucking piss. Ah! Fuck's sake! All right, we're all done. Got right to the end. Load the car down, and saw that the steering wheel was moved slightly because that shitty steering stopper. Fifty quid that was. Shite. Anyway, I'm a bit annoyed. We know the car's straight when the wheels are to the left a bit, so I'm tempted to just move the spine across on the boss, which is, yeah, obviously has repercussions on other things, but just see how it drives first. Let's just fucking send it and see. I'm just gonna drive a lot better. We've got caster, we've got camber, we've got a fast road alignment. Yeah. I mean, it's this fucking expensive thing from the shark brands the brand of the sharks and it's not that strong at all so 
so I blame that. Right, hopefully this just drives mega, but I guess we'll find out. Right, we're going over the same road at the same speed and the car is not darting all over the road. Feels good. Road is very bumpy. <laughs> right, we're back on the same road earlier where we did a bit of a pull. So we're going to do a little bit of a pull and just see if the car tracks and dives all over the road like it did before. So full throttle second gear. It's a very bumpy road. Yeah, it feels a lot better. It's still following the road a little bit. But it's not too bad. driving more like a DC5 should drive now. Right, we're back where we started. How's the car driving? Yeah, it drives really good. We've spent a lot of time on it today, me and Matt. We've spent probably six hours fiddling about, corner weight in it, geo, ride height. We ended up adding about 15 mil on the rear. I don't know if you can tell in this light. And then we did the, the corner weighting and everything to suit that. Car drove really nice then. It's a shame about the steering wheel. I'm a bit pissed off about that, but I mean, is it one of them where you just twist it around? Well, you're going to lose locked. Oh, you're going to lose. Ugh. We're definitely not aligning it again anyway. It's nearly 10 o'clock at night. Lovely summer evening though. What a time to have a DC5. Yeah, the road's absolutely dead. I was having some fun there. Very nice, it's a nice car this. So we swapped the top mounts as well, we've gained some caster, gained some camber as well. It had barely no camber on the car, apart from one corner which had about one and a half degrees I think, but the rest of the corners had virtually no camber. And now it's got 2.2 degrees at the front, 1.8 at the rear, a mil of toe out at the front. And unfortunately the rear is parallel and that's simply because one of the rear toe arms was completely seized. We managed to get one of them freed off. We were going to go for a mill in at the back, but yeah, because one of them was completely seized, it was seized a completely neutral parallel position though. So we just did that to the other side. So parallel on the rear, it's not really what you want, but you'd want a bit of toe in really, but it could have been a lot worse considering it was seized. So you know, happy to settle for that. Nice car to work on. Apart from those rear toe arms, they were a pain in the ass. Doing, Matt. Fixing your uh, alignment. <laughs> oh yes, you're straight now. So it's done. <laughs> 